One of the most nostalgic clubs in the world, Fiorentina. Everyone knows that Nintendo's 90s kit, and God, I wish I was wearing that today. Instead, it's the purple Baltimore Ravens kit. But today, we're going to be rebuilding ACF Fiorentina. We can get them back to the days of Rui Costa, Enrico Chiesa, Gabriel Batistuta, and see if we can win them their first Serie A title since 1969, and hopefully add a couple of copper challenges to that as well. The goal for this rebuild is to make them a guaranteed top four side in the Serie A and potentially lift a couple along the way. Maybe even a Champions League, you never know. Let's see how we get on the next five years as Fiorentina manager. What's going on there guys? Kenby here and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another rebuild. Of course it is two rebuilds a week, two tactics a week and this time we are rebuilding Fiorentina over in Italy. One thing I will ask from you guys, if you've got any ideas of who to rebuild, get them down in the comments below and we will try and get them down in the next couple of weeks because I've been loving making these rebuilds recently. And if you've got any fantastic ideas, make sure to let me know them down below. But today is time for Fiorentina, and the tactic we are using with Fiorentina as well is the overachieving 4 2 3 1 that I built with Mauricio Pochettino. That video came out on Monday. If you have not seen that, head up above me, click that link, and watch the tactics video so you can download this tactic. It's available on Sword OSI and on uh, my Discord channel, so feel free to come to that as well. All links are in the description if you do want to download the tactic. And this save file, the end of season five, will be going in the Discord as well. So you can pick it up from where we get to. But the question is, where will we be in five years' time? And what I've done is the first season, as I do every time, is a lot of the tactic in. I sim forward one year and see how things get on. We've qualified for the Europa League. Last year was the Conference League. So it's a minor upgrade straight away. Level on points with qualifying for Champions League straight away, which is great to see. The formation is doing well. But can we do even better? Next year, I imagine Juventus will be back. They got 31 points this year. A shocking season from them, to be honest. But they'll be back next year because they have not got that deduction in points. The quarterfinals of the Coppa Italia by Parthenope, obviously Napoli. And the quarterfinals of the Conference League have been good to win that one. Because I hope we never have to see it again. I hope from this season onwards, to Europa League this year. And then for three or four years after that, it is just the Champions League. We've got £30 million to spend who can we bring in? The squad itself is good. It's not too bad at all. You've got players like Luka Jovic, uh, Barak, Nico Gonzalez is fantastic on this game. Some brilliant stats. Sofian Amrabat had a fantastic World Cup for Morocco and is certainly going to stay in this team for hopefully the whole of the rebuild. Same as Nikola Milenkovic as well and possibly even Dodo at right back. So they've got some good players. In terms of young players, they've got this man, Ricardo Brasici as well. See if he's going to develop. He's got four and a half star potential ability, current ability of two star and he's 16. Make sure to check him out in your save. In terms of the club itself, uh, I believe they have also got uh, let me just find it. Is it 6 to 18 in youth facilities? So decent youth facilities. These get a little bit better on the old youth recruitment. But certainly a club built to build. Can we build them to Italian giants? Not even European giants. That might be a step too far. But the Viola need to dominate Italy. Let's see if we can do that. Let me find you some transfers and we'll bring you back before the start of season number two. Well, £100 million has been spent. And I think it's been spent very, very well as well. I mean, it's the cover star. It has. To, I haven't made the thumbnail yet, but it has to be this cover star. This guy can go on to do absolutely anything in real life if he wants to. I think he is fantastic. Plagued by injuries, obviously. Uh, is it like a year he's been out for? Injured nine months with a damaged cruciate knee ligament. So I cannot wait for this guy to be back and back playing football properly. 41 million with a future figure of 44. Unbelievable signing. We started with 30 million. We sold 21 million. Obviously, a little bit on the old never never. But Flo Verts, Florian Verts, is going to be our Rui Costa. He's going to be our Deli Alley in the Pochettino tactic. He's going to play in that shadow striker role. Just 20 years of age. What a special player we have on our hands. I think he's going to lead us to absolute glory. And a goalkeeper that I think they can massively help as well is Justin uh, Bijlo. I have no idea how you say that. If that's correct, big dub. Uh, value of four, uh, 35 to £43 million. Pounds. You paid £32 million for him. Fantastic player is Justin Bijlo. A great goalkeeper and always develops very, very well. And I thought, again, we'll get a little bit of Samba in. Marcos Leonardo, obviously maybe a little bit young. He's, he's 20 years of age, so he's the same as Flo Birds, but... Maybe not quite the developed player as him. Just been playing in Brazil with Santos. £12 million. A fantastic deal for him. He looks very, very good. And obviously, you can tell there's a little bit of a trend here. We're going for young, up-and-coming talent. So Aaron Chimacicelia Chimag from Roma, I think it was. Uh, Torino, even. £10 million. This guy looks brilliant. 
18 years of age. He's a centre mid or an advanced playmaker in Cam. I think he looks very, very good and one for the future. Leandro Morgale is a player I've signed in a previous save uh, when he was unbelievable. I've tried to sign him now at a very good price and a very young age. 3.7 million from 1860 Munich. Go and check this kid out. Uh, Odin Thiago Holm, another fantastic player. Can play along the midfield, centre mid or centre attacking midfielder. Very good rotation option for us. 20 years of age from Norway. And then three free signings as well. These are some of the youth players that have come in. So I won't go through all of them. In terms of leaving the club, <coughs> we have sold Rolando Mandragona to RB Leipzig for 7 million. Barak for 6 million. Uh, Zikowski, Male, Montano and Bianchi also leaving for over a million pounds. But the squad is looking much, much better now. I mean, look at this starting 11. I think it's fantastic. Bislow in goal. Dodo, Milinkovic, Igor, Briaki is the back four. Amrabat and Castro really is the two centre mids. Nico Gonzalez on the right. Florian Verts in the cam roll. Leonardo on the left and Jovic up top. We've got Morgala and Martinez quite try as the backup centre backs. You've got Terzic as your backup left back. Holman, Bonham and Tura as your two centre mids. Jonathan Icone is still here. Chima Cachella, Bacalo and Arthur Cabral as well. Another very, very good player. It'll be interesting to see who plays more games out of him and Luka Jovic. And can Luka Jovic hit that fantastic potential you thought he did have? Let's see. Let's go forward to the second season. Can we win the Europa League? Can we win the Coppa Italia? Can we win the Serie A? Let's have a little look. Well, I didn't expect this to happen quite so quickly. We've won the Serie A in the first season. And by the looks of it, we pretty much were there for the whole season. A couple of dips into second. But from game week four onwards, we were winners of the league. Okay. <laughs> it took us one year. We've completed the rebuild. So we'll finish the... <laughs> We won't finish the video here, obviously. We need to go on and dominate, but just 1.82 goals per game, conceding just 0.82. But I suppose we were just consistent over the whole season. Just four losses all season, nine draws, and 25 wins. Runners up in the Europa League as well. Who did we lose the final two? It was 4 3 to Valencia. And it was a. Oh my good God! What did I just see? 94 for 95th minute goals from Andre Almeida. We were 3 2 up in the 94th minute, and we lost because of a Portuguese centre mid. How's that happened? That's out. We could have had a double in the first season. That is outrageous. A very, very good second season. Nico Gonzalez smashed it. 20 goals. Verts, Leonardo, Milenkovic, Jovic, Brekolo, all getting above 10. Icona getting 9 as well. Assist-wise, we have Dodo, Briagi, the two wing-backs doing very well. Uh, Kone, uh, Bonaventura and Brekolo all above 10 assists as well. A fantastic first season and a very good one from Flo Verts as well. I mean, where do we go from here? We've got £25 million to spend. Can we go back to back? Let me see what signings we can make and see if we can get this team even better. I think it might be a one-off. Let me have a little look. We're not quite the 100 million that was spent the season before. Maybe more of a, a rebuild and maybe a bit of a smarter window this one. Just 33 million pounds spent, 9 million goings out as well. So about 24 million pounds is what we ended up spending overall this season. And the main one we brought in is Rooney Bargi, a fantastic right winger, 18 years of age. Pick him up in your saves. It's just 12 million pounds. What, what, what can you say about those stats at 18? He's unbelievable. Go and get him in your save. Dan Axel Zagadou, a very good centre-back. Left-footed, which was the key reason we signed him. With some great jump and reach and heading as well. Just £10 million for him. Luca Pellegrini to be the Briagi replacement at left-back. We'll see what he can do. Brought in from Juventus for just £7 million. Magnus Smelhas Sjong from Valengra. The same club as Thiago Holm. A very good goalkeeper. Young, 22 years of age. He looks really good. And he's just so young as well. And he's going to be a great backup for the rest of this save. And then we brought in some players on a free. Davy Clarsen, number one. A free contract and a very good one at that. A bit of smart business. Blass from FC Nantes. A very, very good signing. Worth £60 million. It was a free contract. Madness from us. Ethan Laird, an absolute legend. If you know Ethan Laird, you know how good he can be. If you don't know Ethan Laird, get to know him. He's on at QPR right now. We're in the mud a little bit. But Ethan Laird is my boy. And he's coming as a backup right back. And Hannibal Medjbury as well. We've brought him in. See if he can progress. He hasn't quite progressed as well as you may hope. We're going to try and get him out on loan. And see what game time he can get. We've got a busy, busy time ahead. We've got Champions League, Serie A, Super Coppa and Coppa Italia. Maybe we, the goal should be can we win all four in this five years. Let's see if we can win any more at the end of season number three.
Well, I tell you what, as a second full season as manager of Fiorentina, one that I expected a lot more from season number three, and we didn't expect what we had in season number two. Second place to AC Milan, 82 points is actually very, very good. I think it's what we got last year and we won the league on 83. So just a point behind last season, we have a few good young players brought in. Knocked down the playoff round by Leipzig in uh, by Leverkusen, sorry, in the Champions League, which I believe is we made the oh, Real Madrid Barcelona final. What a final that is! We made the league phase, I guess, come 12th, and then in the in the knockoff playoff round, we lost on penalties to Bayer Leverkusen, which is absolutely gutting. But it's not the end of the world, and we will move on from that. Maybe next season we can do better. The Coppa Italia runners-up is gutting. Been good to tick that after this, but Milan really had a dominant season. They smashed the league. They smashed the Coppa Italia. And I'm guessing they beat us here as well. No, we lost to Torino on penalties. Fantastic. Well, that's not very good, but we'll move on from that. How did the squad do? Who was scoring all the goals? It's Luka bloody Jovic. 22 goals in just 26 games. I mean, that's very, very impressive from Luka Jovic. He actually looks really, really good. And he can score your goals. So go and get Luka Jovic. Florian Verts, our star boy in Cam, looks brilliant. 20 goals this season, 9 assists. Nico Gonzalez, 19 goals, 4 assists. Milenkovic, 17 goals, 2 assists. Leonardo, a coming of age year, 17 goals, 10 assists. As that inside forward on the left. Blast the free contract, 12 goals, 9 assists. Rooney Bargi got 23 assists from the right wing position. Now that right wing position is pretty much a creative attacking playmaker on the right. And he's absolutely nailed that. He's done so, so well over on that right wing. Um, Dan getting a few goals as well. Briagi doing well with the assists. Looks like he played more than, um, what's his name? The, the, the other guy we signed. The, the Pellegrini only played eight games and Briagi played 46. There, it's Briagi. My voice is struggling a little bit. Let's go forward. Season number, the end of this season, the start of next what transfers have we got to do? Let's have a little look. We've got 38 million, so some good, good money to spend. Well, just the three signings coming in this season, 61 million pounds have been spent, and Tyrrell Malassia is the most expensive man we have brought in to replace Briagi in an upgrade on Pellegrini. 27.5 million pounds from Manchester United. Hopefully, Tyrrell will be fantastic as our left back. Reese Nelson's been brought in to help cover Rooney Bargi, so them two are the new right wingers. And Yevandro Borges Sanchez looks like a fantastic young left winger. Borussia Mönchengladbach and Gladbach released goals of £13 million. He's been brought in to cover Nico Gonzalez. Uh, Icone's left to Roma. Briagi's left to Roma as well. So we've made some good signings. We've made, made the team a little bit more fresh, a little bit more youthful. And the team we look at it is Bijlo in goal. Dodo, Milenkovic, Igor, Malassia, Amrabat, Blas, Rooney Bargi, Flo Burtz, Nico Gonzalez, and Marcos Leonardo. But we've got a start on the line, but it wouldn't surprise me if Jovic also starts up there. Can we win the league again? Can we put on a better show in, in the Champions League? And can we finally bring home the Coppa Italia? Let's have a little look. We are getting closer. Semi-finals of the Champions League. One point off the trophy, the Serie A trophy again in Tapipan the Post this time, but we are certainly in the top four clubs. Inter, Fiorentina, Milan, Juventus. Fiorentina are back as the big time. We've won the Super Coppa here as well, which is fantastic. We really wanted to win that one. The Coppa Italia, sadly, semi-final by Torino, who are maybe a little bit of a bogey team for us. They beat us in the Super Coppa Italia last year. They've come 14th, but they've knocked us out in the semis of this year's Coppa Italia. They've gone to lose that one on penalties to Juventus. Champions League, I'm very, very impressed with. Bayern ended up winning the whole thing. They beat us 4-3 on aggregate, and we nearly had a Fiorentina versus Tottenham final, which is a guaranteed to win. Of course we would have, because Spurs aren't going to a trophy, are they? So we'd have been guaranteed to win that, but sadly we haven't. And it's still another good season, though. Luka Jovic, as I sort of expected, having a very good season. 22 goals in 33 games. Milenkovic is smashing the goals in as in back. 19 goals from him. Verts with 17. Leonardo with 17. Nico with 15. And the assist, Rudy Bargi, just loves an assist, doesn't he? Another unreal season assist. 21 in total. He's absolutely smashed it. Unreal stats from Rudy Bargi. Season 5, I'd like to get a double. And I want one of them to be the Syria. I want to finish this with the Syria in our back pocket. I, I feel like we have to. If we win the Champions League as well, it's outrageous. The Coppa Italia and the Syria for season number five is what we want. How much money have we got to get there? We've got £42 million. The board 
believe. We've not spent over 100 million since season number one. Let's see if we can spend some big, big bucks and get there. If I leave you guys in the capable hands of winning the Champions League, I'm happy with that. But I want to win the rest and dominate Italy for season number five. Let's see what transfers we can make for this season. Well, there's some massive, massive signings in this final transfer window. And the main one we've made... He's a centre mid, and it's Joe Willock, the man who scored against Manchester United yesterday as I record this. We won't talk about that too much. But Joe Willock, a player I like very, very much, a young English centre mid with a lot of potential. 17 million rising to 21, a very, very good signing in my opinion. You can see here as well, Luka Jovic has now gone to Juventus on a free contract after rejecting many, many contracts. So we have not got him. David Clarkson has also gone on a free contract, a great signing for a couple of years as a backup. Next one we made is Rashid Driver, a young Australian striker, valued between 10 and 14 million, pure pace. Finishing there as well, and he's got to grow. And Donny Marlin is the next signing we have made. £10 million, 27 years of age. Can he finally come of age and be the man we want him to be at Fiorentina? It'll be good to see. And the next four are for you guys. These are youngsters where when you pick this save up, these are going to be fantastic for you. It's Cidinho Ferreira, the Brazilian goalkeeper, 19 years of age, six foot four already has come in. We're going to try and get him out on loan. Luis Aribe, he wanted to come in and be a starter straight away. I managed to convince him to go back to his parent club on loan, but this guy looks fantastic. The Colombian centre-back, six foot tall, looks brilliant. Uh, Giacomo Constantini, a young centre-back slash right-back who have loaned out to Pescara, looking very good as well, 5 for 10. And Sergio, a young Cam left wing, right wing from Real Madrid, 17 years of age, signed from Real Madrid for two million pounds so in terms of your development center now you've got some very good young players in here with potential you've got a lot of our four star and that is just them and then they're here you've got Briashi as well who sadly has never really developed but you've got some good players in there which you can certainly get some potential out of and going into the final season the squad looks like this it's Justin Bislow in goal with Dodo Milenkovic and Igor free from the very start have stayed around till now with Tyrell Malassia as the left back Amrabat still in the team from the start with Joey Willock next to him. Nico Gonzalez still in the team at right wing with Florian Burks, the star boy, Marcus Leonardo on the left and Donny Marlin up top. We want the brace, the Coppa Italia, the Serie A and can we win the Champions League as well? Let's see for this final season with Fiorentina where I'm going to leave you guys off. Like I said, then it is the final season. So if you guys can, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and just do all your things on these four wonderful things here. Twitter, TikTok, Twitch. Come over, use your Prime sub, subscribe if you want, obviously. If not, just follow, and it helps me out so, so much. So thank you guys for all the support so far. Make sure to smash the like on the video and leave the comment for Yola down in the comments below. So I know you guys got all the way to season number five. Did we lift the Serie A for the second time? Let me show you. We didn't win this Serie A. We come second again. 84 points. We've had 83, 82, 83, 84. So consistent. And sadly, semi-final in the Champions League again by PSG, who ended up losing the final to Real Madrid. It was a bit of a battering 4-1 over the two legs. But, I mean, we have built Fiorentina to such a good spot. And we've even gone ahead and finally won the Coppa Italia as well. So we won the Super Coppa Italia. We won the Coppa Italia. We won the Serie A. Great performance in Italy. And we are on the edge of the Champions League as well. I can sense it. I sense a better striker and we'd have done it. Because to be honest, um, where is he? Mr. Donny Marlin hardly played and didn't do very well when he did. Leonardo did do very well from that left wing. And Evando Borgia Sanchez done well as well when covering. Nikola Milenkovic is on a different planet in terms of scoring headers and goals. 26 goals from the centre-back. Gonzalez with 24, 11 assists. Leonardo, 23 and 10 assists. Flo Verts, I mean, fa fantastic. For, for us alone, he has done unreal. Above a 7 every single season, with two seasons at 7.43 as well. So, massive, massive respect to Flo Verts. He has been fantastic. Yvandro Borgia Sanchez, I think we're leaving him with you. When he's at his peak, he wants a brand new deal to come in, give him a contract. He's unbelievable. And Rudy Bargi, of course, with all of the assists, looks fantastic as well. And this squad is just ready now for them last little bits to come in. In terms of the players, you've got Oribe now who's come back from his loan deal. And he looks outrageously good at just 19 years of age. Potential five-star. 
Get him in that starting lineup and make sure you're playing him as well. Constantine looks great. Sergio looks great. Um, and we've also got uh, Sendio Ferreira as the goalkeeper who looks brilliant. So there is players in this team that are going to carry you for the next few years. I think we've built this team very well. We've built it for the future. And this safe I was in the Discord. So make sure to come to the Discord. It's down in the Discord below in the comments. Get in it. Use this file and win it all with Fiorentina because I want you to. I want to leave it here and let you guys absolutely smash it. Thank you for watching. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll speak to you next time. What on earth has happened to Valencia in these last couple of years? Right now, they're sitting 16th, just outside the relegation places in La Liga. Lots of debt as well. Owner is not the greatest, and there is a lot to go on at Valencia. Today, we're going to be doing a youth-only slash under-18 silence-only rebuild with Valencia. Trying to get that debt clear, kind of get them back to the top of La Liga. And we're using the unbelievable formation I released on Friday from Joseph VY. What's going on there guys, Kempi here and welcome back to the channel. I hope you are all doing very well. It's my first time recording a video in about a week. I've been so busy. We've now got a massive partnership as well with Sword Out SI. So full preparation today. If you haven't seen that announcement, I released a video on Friday, which is the tactic we're going to be using today. It's a tactic based off Joseph VY. Uh, the guy's an absolute genius on Sword Out SI. I'm going to be using that tactic today. I'll be making two videos a week over there as well. So if you are subscribed to the channel and you want to see more Kempi, what I'll be doing over there is a tactic a week and a rebuild per week on a Tuesday and a Thursday is the plan. So Monday tactic, Tuesday tactic, Wednesday rebuild, Thursday rebuild, Friday tactic, Sunday rebuild. All of the Kempi content, you just have to subscribe on two different channels. Obviously one of them is a massive channel on Sword Art SI, so massive thank you to them guys over there. But today is Valencia time and it's time to rebuild Valencia. Like I said in real life, they are sitting down in 16th position and they are in major need of saving because Right now, things are not looking good for Valencia. We'll be using a tactic which I have found online. It is 4-3-2-1 Joseph B. Y. This is from the Sword Out SI website and it's quite frankly outrageous. I'm going to quickly just pick this as a quick pick and you can see the team that's going to be lining up on most games. This first season, I'm telling you now, we break the game. This tactic is literally outrageous. Uh, it's got defensive wingers, inverted wing backs. I'll go through the tactic now with you guys. There's a sweeper keeper on defend in goal with tackle harder. Inverted wing back on support, shoot less often and tackle uh, tackle harder and get further forward. That is on the both left and right wing back. If you have not seen that video on Friday, Sergio Ramos scored a 30 yard screamer and he was pretty much the most attacking guy in the whole team. And that was from right back. And when I go through the in possession instructions, you understand why. This formation is so wild. So you've got ball playing defender at the left centre back and the right centre back. Dribble more and tackle harder. A DM on support just in front. Hold position, tackle harder. Defensive winger on the right. Cross from byline. Shoot less often. Get further forward. The same on the left. Two shadow strikers on attack in behind and advance forward. The shadow strikers are set to tackle harder and advance forward. Also, to tackle harder. The mentality is set to balanced. It is shorter passing. Pass into space. Focus played on the left and the right. Underlap in the left and the right. Mind-blowing stuff. Higher tempo, run at the defence, lower crosses. Roll it out, counter, counter press, high press system. Press much more often as well and prevent short distribution and get stuck in. This formation is very good. It does break the game. So that is why we've set limitations at the club. The club actually has very good youth facilities, 16 youth facilities, 16 training facilities. So we're going to be using them as much as possible, as well as setting the limit on signing only under 18 players so they can become homegrown at the club. If we did this, use this tactic, and we just made any signings we want, we'd probably dominate Spanish football for the next 15 years and would never need to touch the game again. But because of the formation and because of the restrictions we're putting in, this should be a very, very fun rebuild to see if we can not only get to the top of Spanish football, but also stay there as well. Let's get right into the end of this first season. I'll show you guys how well we've done in the first year. Then go through some transfers we've made. Go through some, obviously, a lot of lone players here. Iax Mariba, Samuel uh, Lino, Justin Kleiber. There's a lot of players that will not be around next season. So we've got to replace them through youth or through under-18 signings. So let's get right into it. End of season one. How have we done? Just very quickly, before we do get into the end of season one, if you can, make sure just to carry on smashing the support. Like the video, it takes two seconds. Comment down below on why you think Valencia are so wrong and who is your favourite player to come out the Valencia Youth Academy as well. Make sure you're liking the video, subscribing to the channel and following on all these things as well. We've got Twitter, TikTok, uh, not Instagram, uh, Twitch and YouTube because we have to be on, on everything these days. And I mean, I'm about to show you 
some pretty outrageous results. Given their position in real life, winning the league is rather impressive with Valencia. Um, no signings. This is the team that is playing in real life, sitting 16th in the league. We've absolutely smashed it. And Edinson Cavani, I mean, how's he done that then? 40 games, 50 Three goals. He managed to get 46 goals in La Liga on his own. 7.87 average rate, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be up there for the Ballon d'Or. I mean, that is ridiculous. Andrea Amalda also having a very good season. That shadow striker role. Jose Gaia playing in that left wing, defensive winger position, having an unbelievable season as well. 21 assists for him. But Cavani stole the show, and this Valencia team actually did very, very well. I mean, we've got a lot of players, like I said, that will be leaving the club uh, in terms of loans. Um, so... We've got to get rid of them four straight away. And we're instantly left there with a team that's not quite as strong. I mean, need another cam, need another DM. Yunus Musa is very good. He's probably going to move in to that cam role. Um, but there's a lot to go on here at the club. And in terms of the youth facilities as well, there is some very good young players. We've got Carlos here, who has come from the Youth Academy this year. Uh, we've got Fida, uh, Apara. I think there's a guy that I use pretty much the whole time. He might be in the squad already. I'm pretty sure he actually started in DM. It's Hugo Guillemon. This guy is going to stay around for the whole five years. He is Valencia through and through, starting in 2016. He's been here the whole time. He's been here through the hard times. And it's only right we bring the big good times back to Hugo. He played 33 games this season done very very well he could play all the way up the center of the park but he'll be playing in center back for us mainly um, but there is a big old squad here there's a lot of players that are here there's a lot of good young players as well one player we are going to make sure we use is Cooper at the end he also looks very very good transfer wise we've not got a lot of money as to be expected in terms of the debts let me just show you we are 146 million pounds in debt we need to try and get that down as much as possible in this. So I want to basically leave Valencia in the best position I can for you guys. Because if you don't know, at the end of the season, at the end of the save, I'm going to get this save in the Discord channel. So head down to that Discord channel so you can download this. Uh, and I want to leave Valencia in the best place for you. You can see in terms of the league position, we were pretty much at the top and second the whole way. Obviously finishing just one point above Real Madrid. Knocked out in the semis of both the Copa de España and the Copa del Rey by Real Madrid. So... Maybe Real Madrid got very unlucky to not do it all. Did they win the Champions League this year? Because if they did, they could have had an... Oh my God, they're in the final. They could have had an absolutely wild season, winning absolutely everything. But we managed to pivot them to the post. In terms of goals per game, we're scoring 2.58 goals per game, which is very, very high. Getting just 0.82 as well. As we go into the La Liga... Uh, detailed stats as well. You can see uh, we're sitting top on most goals of 98 goals, 14 clear of Real Madrid. Conceded as well, we are quite a bit below Real Madrid there. 31 goals conceded. Possession wise, we should be fairly high. We're actually not on that list, which is rather interesting because all of the sims we have done with this have been quite high on the possession. Uh, 15 clean sheets. Real Madrid done very well defensively. Just 23 clean sheets in 38 games. That is outrageously good. Um, but very, very good first season. There are some players here we're going to be keeping an eye on. So let's go forward to the start of the next season. I'll show you guys the transfers that we have made and I'll show you guys the team and what it'll be lining up for for season number two. But when you're only spending £1.2 million in a summer window, surely it's not possible to, you know, keep that La Liga title. We've signed Jean Martin, a young centre-back. Doesn't look fantastic, but it's from Real San Sebastian. We signed Baba as well on a free contract. Uh, three players have left on a free it's very difficult to hire players and get them in when you're looking at only under 18s. This is the team we're going to be going with. And you can see there's even two silver-starred players in this team. One of them is Carlos, who I showed you last time out. He's a young left winger that's come through the academy. We're going to train this guy up. And he's going to be locked in to that left mid role this season. The team is looking like Georgie Mamadashvili in goal. A very, very good young goalkeeper. Where did he come from? He come from Georgia, actually, and end up signing for Blenchy. I like this guy a lot in real life. And I hope... He could be someone Manchester United looking to get in this summer. Uh, Yunus Musa and Almeida in the cam roles. Carlos at the left wing. Castillo at the right wing. Copelien has come back with his loan. He's going to slot into that DM spot. Gaia, Randall Correa, Palista, Guleman and Mamadashvili make up the rest of the back line. But like I said, it's going to be very difficult to retain La Liga this season. Season preview wise, we're sitting in fifth place. We have got the Champions League. So I would be surprised if we did maybe drop out of that top four. I simmed this over a week and a half ago. So I've genuinely got absolutely no idea how we carry on going for right the save. I knew we won the league in the first year. But after that, I genuinely had absolutely no idea. So I'm excited to go through. And it's almost like re-going on, on, on my past and going through what we've gone through here. Um, but it's going to be a good fun season. Finances wise, we're looking okay. Debts and loan, we're down to £102 million. Already. That Champions League money is going to help us out massively. 
Transfer budget wise, only 3 million, but I suppose it doesn't matter too much. Let's go ahead. How have we done at the end of season one and who has been the standout performer for season number two? Well, I said I'd be happy with keeping in the top four, and that is exactly what we actually managed to do. Finishing seven points clear of Villarreal, who fifth place also got a Champions League spot. Champions League, I think, is fairly respectable. Knocked out uh, by Liverpool in the round of 16, who did go on to win it, but obviously a very, very strong side. Copa del Rey quarterfinaled by Real Madrid, but we did win the Super Copa de España, a 1 0 win against Real Madrid, a Hugo Druro goal. Uh, he is going to be a key player for us this season. We managed to keep him locked in up front over Edinson Cavani because. Hugo Juro is, I believe, Valencia. Oh, he's not. He's a young player that's come through from Getafe we've signed. Um, but it's a very good young player anyway at Valencia. And um, yeah, we decided to lock him in this season. 36 goals he scored in 51 appearances. So a very, very good season for him. And the cover star, Yunus Musa. If you do not know who this guy is, he's absolutely outrageous. He's been in our save. He's 21 years old and he's played 32 caps for the USA already. Uh, English and Italian nationality and for us, he's already a four and a half star current ability player. And he's absolutely outrageous. He's been playing in that shadow striker role for us. And he's been doing a bloody fantastic job at it as well. 14 goals and 14 assists in La Liga this season. Now Maida dropping off ever so slightly. Gaia in that left wing back inverted role doing very well as well. And young Carlos, one goal, eight assists, but for his first season in professional football, just 16 years of age now, and he was 15 for the first half of the season. He's done very, very well, actually. I'm quite impressed at how he has done. A 6.83 average rating. Didn't look too out of depth. And in terms of average rating, the highest is Musa. Mosquera has come in at second. He played lots of games for us. Uh, he is a young 19-year-old through the Blencia uh, Academy as well. He's done quite well, actually. How is that? 34 games. So we played a lot of games. Uh, Juro doing well. Gaia. Uh, where is Koblien? Here he is. 49 games, two goals, four assists. Another good young player. And he's not got the greatest potential on him. But he's a player that I think could do very well here. We signed him from Lens nearly four or five years ago now. Uh, but he looks very, very good, actually. He's quite well-rounded. And he's going to be good in terms of the youth system. In terms of the players that have come up into the youth academy. Looking at potential. There's a couple of good ones. Again, uh, Tumani Cisse looks like a really good left back. Inigo Saints looks very good. Uh, Alberto Garagavola looks good as well. It's a good striker. Uh, not the greatest of finishing on him, so maybe won't be the best. Uh, heading into Valencia B, is there anyone in here that could help us out? Let's have a little look. Not really, so it's going to be another difficult season. Obviously, I have set here the positions that I am looking to improve on. Right back, centre back, left back, right mid and Cam. What sort of money have we got for that? 25 million. Now, that looks quite a lot, but there's only a certain amount of players you can actually sign. You can see I already put in bids in for a couple. Fairly good on the old wage budget. In terms of finances, this is what we wanted to see. We are now up to 60 million in the bank. Net debt at just 54 million. This needs to grow and grow and grow. We need to get Valencia back to being an absolute powerhouse in Spanish football. Let's see what transfers we can make for the end of season number one. Just quickly, the data hub, the goals per game certainly come down removing, removing Cavani. Uh, Hugo Juro did not have quite as good a season as Cavani did, so maybe a striker is in the offing as well. So let's go ahead and let's find out what we can do for season number three. We actually managed to spend a little bit of money and we spent £36 million, pounds, which I think was needed because finance as well, we have got quite a lot in the bank. Only £5 million left in the transfer budget, but like I did show you, the debts are coming down, the overbalance is going up, and if we want to keep that happening, we need to stay in the Champions League. So Joao Veloso, the first one, he's just clocked over to being 19 years of age. Now we've gone through uh, into June, but we signed him at 18. Looks very, very good as a shadow striker. 10 finishing isn't the greatest, but we're certainly looking to improve that. Five star potential on the man, very consistent. Just 19 years of age now, six foot one. He's going to be a fantastic shadow striker pair for Yunus Musa. Last season with Benfica, he didn't play too many games. 6.85 average rating. He's coming in here to be an absolute star. 16 flair, 16 vision excites me a lot as well. So he's going to be a very exciting player. Alex has been signed. A young 18-year-old from the Real Madrid uh, Academy. We signed him for £5 million. He played seven games last season for Real Madrid B. He's going to be a backup to our man, Carlos. Uh, Tommy Stepford has come in. An 18-year-old Holland English goalkeeper. You guys should know who this guy is. He's from Ajax. Uh, he's six foot four. He's an absolute giant. Uh, and he's doing very, very well at Ajax in the Youth Academy there. So he's come here for just, what was it, £3.5 million. Pounds. So we'll see how he does as our backup goalkeeper. Uh, Alfredo Mitkov, our first regen signed. He looks very, very good, doesn't he? Uh, 16 aggression, 18 bravery, great jump reach, great heading as well. He's coming in and gone straight back on loan to Cadiz, but he was signed for just £2 million. Pounds. Tommaso Girardelio has been signed 18 years of age. This guy 
is a real life player. He's actually at Padova. He's had a loan spell at Juventus, which is a little bit weird. Um, but he looks very good in terms of acceleration. Finishing is not great, but can be improved. Composure also needs to be improved, but looks very good and has some decent potential. And Marcos Zamora has also come in. A very good young player signed from Deportivo La Coruña. Uh, he's going to be our right winger back up. Um, or maybe even starter actually. I've not quite got that locked in or have I? I have. He's going to be starting at right wing. So these positions are going to be locked in for this season. So Mamadashvili is in goal. Jean Martin and Guillemon at centre back with Jesus Vasquez, who's another very good young player. I think we've moved Gaia on now out of the team. We've moved on to Jesus and Vasquez. And he looks like a very good left back. Played 32 games for us last season and looking very, very good. And that's that inverted wing back on support. He's certainly got the ability, the technical ability, to do a very good role in there. Koblian keep it as the DM for this season. Zamora as the right mid. Carlos as the left mid. Yunus Musa in at cam. And the rest is all for the game to decide. So let's go ahead. Let's simulate how can we do this year. We're back in the Champions League, Del Rey and Espana. And obviously, hopefully, the Liga, we can do very well this season. Let's go ahead. Season number three. Can we get that title back? Let's find out. In classic Kempi fashion, I managed to cook up the save just a little bit in terms of where I saved it in terms of my simming points. But I'll show you the Champions League. We end up getting knocked out in the round of 16 by Barcelona, who are obviously very, very strong. Sadly, getting knocked out to them. Uh, but if we head back into here, everything is still there. So Copa del Rey, sadly knocked out in the fourth round by Albacete. That's actually very frustrating. We need to win that at some point. And semi-final in the Supercopa de España by Barcelona. Back in the top four again, much tighter this season. We need to certainly improve on this a little bit and try and get that trophy back. I've already made the signings I have for this season, but just going into the data hub, 2.34 goals per game is getting better. The Gazeta per game has certainly gone down both to just 1.04. There's a few players you might not recognize in here. We'll go through them in just a second. But Tommaso Girardello done very well as our backup striker. 11 goals and 5 assists in this season. And the other striker, I'm not actually sure who played up top. I might have sold him already. Uh, Yunus Musa, 24 goals, 18 assists, doing very well as usual. I mean, every single stat, at least above 11, is absolutely outrageous. So if you're looking for a well-rounded midfielder, go and get this guy. He's an absolute king. And like I said, transfers have been made already. I mean, you have spent some serious money. And the player that's got left the door is Hugo Juro. Last season, just four goals. Uh, no, sorry. 18 goals in 20 appearances before leaving in January, which is maybe why our season fell off a little bit. Uh, if we do head to here... Eh, it didn't change too much. It changed a little bit when he left. I mean, we dropped down sort of 6th, 7th and 5th. We didn't have the greatest backup striker, which is why Giordello played lots of games for us. But we have gone out there and we spent big this summer. And Felipe is the signing that we needed. A Brazilian striker, 16 dribbling, 16 finishing, 17 determination, 16 technique, 16 flair. Great pace as well. Five foot nine. He's going to be the man to lead the line. He looks absolutely outrageous. I'm glad I've gone ahead and signed a player like this. A regen with some serious, serious potential. He looks very, very good. Five-star potential. Nothing against him in terms of consistency. Last season at Benfica, he only scored one goal in 13 appearances. I'm sure that's going to change with the style we're going to be playing him. And he's going to be absolutely outrageous. Igor uh, Travaros is another player we have signed. Brazilian player from Flamengo, 15 million pounds looks very very good 19 determination 17 heading 15 jumping reach surely he's going to score some goals with that head of his just a little bit inconsistent which is a little bit of a shame with him but he's looking very very good at six foot five 89 kg uh, emilio herrera a set mid that's come on potentially to replace um what's his name Kobalien in that DM role because he's not quite progressing as well as I'd like him to. So this guy with some great technique, first touch, he can certainly be a very good player in that DM role from Uruguay, just 18 years of age as well. Five foot seven. So I quite like that sort of Manuel Agate sort of player in there. Uh, Hector Fort has come in from the Barcelona on the B team, a real player. So it's quite nice to try and sign these. This guy's eight, uh, 16 in real life, but looking very, very good. Just come back from the under 20 World Cup where he had a 7.4 average rating. Uh, very good all rounded stats as a right back as well. So looking very good from him. Signed from the Barcelona B team. Uh, Eduardo San Martin, another backup striker. 16 dribbling, 17 finishing, <coughs> 18 determination. 17 player, 16 technique. Looking very similar to the last guy we just signed, Felipe, but for much, much cheaper. Slightly inconsistent with him. So he's going to back up uh, for this season. Fernando Sanchez uh, Benitez. Wow. And as soon as I found this player, I remember thinking, wow, 20 determination. It's exactly what I want to see. But as a shadow striker, he's also got 15 finishing, decent enough pace, and he's six foot tall. Good passing and technique on him as well. So I'm very excited to see how this guy develops. He's going to turn into an absolute demon, I'm sure, for just 1.7 million. 
from Malaga as well. So excited to see what he can do. And Ebi Kok is another player that has been signed. A young centre-back, good determination, good decision-making, good balance, and not great head nor jump and reach. So maybe more of a right-back or left-back, but at just five foot nine, he could be a very good centre-back for us as well. Obviously, Hugo Juro leaving and Dimitri Falquer uh, not quite making the cut. I've not managed to lock in anyone this season. We're going to go ahead and just simulate. Um, but in terms of finances, we are looking much better now. £89 million in the bank. This graph, astronomical money has come through the club. And the debt is now just down to £28 million. In terms of the club, I need to try and remember if I did that, improving the youth facilities a little bit more to see if there's anyone that's going to be very good for us. In terms of the potential of the club, we're looking very good. A few five-star players in here. Uh, we've got Jose Maria Iglesias, a 15-year-old winger. He looks very, very good. Uh, Eli Koch, uh, Timu CSA, it looks very good as well. Guy Selim from Israel as a young goalkeeper at just 16 years of age. Also looks quite good at five, uh, six foot five as well. No only players in the B team. So let's go ahead. Season number three. Well, season number four actually it is now. Wow, we've gone through this quick, haven't we? Uh, how are we going to do? Can we get our title back? Can we win the Copa del Rey? That's what I want this season. Let's see if we can do it. Well, I tell you what, in terms of a fourth season in an only under 18s signings and youth only rebuild, second in La Liga, by, by some margin, to be fair, to Real Madrid, sadly the runners up in the Copa del Rey, but doing very, very well and holding our own as a massive club in Spain. The debt now is gone. Finances wise, we're looking very strong. Money is in the bank, and trust me, Valencia now are set up for the future to be absolute powerhouses in Spanish football. We've got a whole other season to go through. We've cleared all the worries around Valencia in just four years and made them a young team that love scoring goals and a very good progressive team. Yunus Musa, another 15 goal, 20 assist season. Just looking at these, 7.12, 7.54, 7.61, 7.30. He's looking absolutely outrageous. I mean, has he won anything in terms of like world awards? He's not won anything in terms of world awards. I mean, Spanish League, uh, Spanish League Player of the Year last season is very good to see, actually. I didn't even go through that. North American Player of the Year as well. Looking very, very good, Yunus Musa. Fernando Sanchez Benitez as well. The player I pointed out, I mean, 1.7 million. 20 determination, I was pointing out. 16 finishing, 6 foot tall. Unreal season for him. 15 goals, 11 assists in 41 appearances. A very good first season for a young 18-year-old. And Felipe as well. Last season at Benfica, one goal in 13 games. For us, this season in the league alone, 19 goals in 27 games. Overall, 34 goals in 41 games. A 7.27 average rating is fantastic. Zamora doing very well, six goals, uh, seven goals, sorry, six assists. Um, João Veloso, seven goals, 11 assists, also doing well. Tommaso doing well off the bench as well. In terms of assists, though, Yunus Musa has absolutely smashed it. Jesus Vazquez also developing fairly well at that left-back role. Maybe time to replace him. He's not really happy at the club. Doesn't like big matches and really isn't progressing maybe quite as well as we did hope. Transfer-wise, like I said, we've got some serious money. We've got £42 million to spend now. It's time to see if we can find some very good under-18s to come into the club. Potentially need to improve that goals per game a little bit more. Maybe another cam. Maybe... It's just a case of another year where they're progressing. Felipe will end up scoring 100 goals next season. So let's get into the last transfers we are going to do in this save and go ahead and find out what we can do. One last very, very quick ask for you guys. If you can comment down below on your favourite player from this save, that helps out massively. The comments, you have no idea to create how much a comment helps out. So just comment down below how much you've enjoyed this video. Your favourite young player we have signed. Maybe it's going to cover the next couple of minutes as we go through the results of season number five and the signs we did end up making. And also just make sure to like that video as well. So again, helps out massively. It's all in the same space. It's all absolutely free to do so. So if you do enjoy the content around here, just head down there and do them things. And obviously subscribe as well because... You should be subscribed by now. I think only actually 18% uh, of you watching this are subscribed. So there's about 80% of you that are watching this video that are not subscribed. So just go down there and click subscribe. It helps out massively. This season has been a little bit more tough. We have finally dropped out of the Europa League, uh, out of the Champions League, down into the Europa League. And maybe this season, the youth has got a little bit into us. And for you guys, I mean, you could pick this save up now. In a completely debt clear club, lots of money in the bank, lots of very good young players as well that if you did want to sell on and move on from, you certainly could. I mean, Fernando Sanchez Benitez might be one of the best players in the world at this point. He looks absolutely outrageous. Like I said, 1.7 million we signed him from from Malaga. He's at a back-to-back 7.15 and above average rating season. Anticipation, finishing, determination, passing technique. I mean, he's absolutely off the charts good. The only con on him is his weakest attribute is not getting into rough challenges. 
And as a shadow striker, I don't mind that because I don't need you to be doing that. I need you to be scoring goals. I need you to be creating chances. And that's exactly what this guy is doing. So if you pick up this save, make sure to use this guy. Like I said, this save can be picked up down in the Discord link. Felipe, not having the greatest of second seasons, to be honest. Uh, just 19 goals and two assists. Nico Otto is a player we signed in the summer, just gone. And he had a fairly good season. 25 appearances, 14 goals and six assists. Uh, Eunice Musa doing very well. Geraldo Veloso, uh, Zamora and Carlos have done quite well. The defensive wing position is quite a weird one to get results out of. So they've done well just to be involved. Uh, any more signs we did make, I think you should probably just go through them so you guys don't think I've just spawned some random players in. I mean, Emilio Lastra come in. Uh, he's a very good young cam. I think he actually went back out on loan, possibly. And Nico Otto, we signed for £25 million. Pounds. We've just seen this guy. A uh, very expensive, but very good player. Lamin Yatta from uh, Bayern Munich. He's a good defensive winger. So he was signed. And David Rios as well. A young right back signed as well. Uh, a few players gone out the door. I mean, finally, Jose Gai has left. Uros Rakic has also left. Koblien finally ended up leaving to Almira. But end up developing quite nicely, actually. But as the team as a whole, this team is very, very good. It's young. It's full of talent. I mean, in terms of the actual general info, uh, looking at age-wise, you've got a 26-year-old in goal, which is fine to have an older goalkeeper. Then 20, 27, Hugo Gullemon, staying at the club the whole time. How well has he progressed? He looks outrageously good. Uh, and then you've got Trevaros at 20, uh, Theo Randall Carrera at 28. Then you've got Veloso at 21. Uh, Carlos and Zamora both at 19. Benitez at 19. Musa at 24. And Felipe at 20. And the bench is just basically on the 21's bench. So a very, very strong team here at Valencia and one that you guys can pick up and hopefully have very much fun with. If you guys do use the save, let me know in the Discord channel. Like I said, it's available to download there. And I know you guys want to see these as well. So like the video, subscribe to the channel and I'll speak to you next time. PSG have dominated France for way too long. And it is time today to see if we can gain back some competitive nature in French football. PSG have dominated the years of the last sort of 10 or the 21st century. It's time to bring it back to Lyon. We are here on 74 points after the first season. No signings made. 24 points behind PSG. Five years, not too much money. Can we get us to the top of the league? Uh, are we ever going to fall just short? Can we win any trophies along the road? We've got a five-year rebuild coming up where I'm sure we're going to sign some very good, fun, young players. Let's get right into it. What is going on there, guys? Kempi here, and welcome back to my favourite type of videos to make. It is the FM23 Rebuilds, and today we've got one with Olympic Leon, a team I like very, very much. From the days of Janino blasting 40 yard free kicks into the top corner to now, where you've got a wonder kid, Rayan Shirky, dominating the scene and just being a completely beautiful footballer that he is. He is going to be a vocal point of this rebuild, and today, it's going to be a fun one. We're going to try and gain back some control in league, and it's been dominated by PSG for the last sort of 10 years. And it's time to see if we can get some stranglehold back. We've had Leon win a title in there. We've had Monaco win a title in there. And then from 2011-12, which is now 11 years, it has been dominance from PSG. We had a spell about 15 years ago where we did very well as well. And it's time to see if we can get back to that. It's a 24-point gap, and they have got a robot Kylian Mbappe up front, who I imagine is going to stay for the whole time. So it's going to be very, very difficult. We have simmed the first season. We've done nothing in terms of transfers. We've not interrupted the season at all. We've put the tactic in and we've simmed. And we've come third. 24-point gap. Just a 9-point gap to Marseille as well. It was a team that we certainly do not want to be sitting behind by the end of this five years. We definitely want to be close to PSG, if not just overtaking them. And the tactic to help us get there... It's a chaotic one. It's a 4 3 3. Three strikers up front, a DM with a deep line playmaker and support in the middle, two defensive wingers, two inverted wing backs, uh, two ball playing defenders, and a sweeper keeper on defend. In fact, quickly go through the tactic. Tackle harder on the sweeper keeper. Uh, inverted wing backs have got pass it shorter, take for your risk, get further forward, and tackle harder on both of them. Both ball playing defenders have pass it shorter, tackle harder. Deep line play American support on tackle harder. Both defensive wingers on pass it shorter, cross from byline, get further forward. Uh, two outside advanced forwards have both got pass it shorter and tackle harder. And the advanced forward in the middle has just got tackle harder on. It's set to a balanced dollar play, pass into space, low crosses, run into the fence, focus play down the left and the right, but underlap the left and the right. Uh, higher tempo, roll it out, distribute quickly, counter, counter press, low defensive line, high press, much more often pressing on the goalkeeper, uh, prevent the short goalkeeper distribution and get stuck in. And I love this formation. It just looks wacky. It looks wild. And it's going to be great fun. Let's go forward. We've got 
£29 million to try and make a few signings. Let's see if we can make any signings and get Leon just a little bit closer to PSG. If you guys are looking forward to this Leon rebuild, if you can, just make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow on all these wonderful platforms here. TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube. We do the whole shebang, so make sure to come over to every single one of them. Drop a sub, drop a follow. It helps me out massively, and it helps you guys out. Keep up to date on all the fantastic content we produce here over in the Kempi Army. Uh, but here we are then. The transfers have been made. We are sitting here with Leon, predicted by the media to finish in fourth place this year. Who has overtaken us? That is what I want to see. I've clicked the complete wrong thing. Monaco predicted to come second. Marseille third. We're predicted to come fourth. So what transfers have we done? Well, first of all, we have had uh, Moussa Dembele leave the club on a free transfer. Uh, we didn't stop his transfer going through. He's going to Aston Villa. Uh, that was done in the January. I tried to offer him a contract. He was having absolutely none of it. So he has left and he scored the majority of our goals last year. So we've got to replace him. We've made three signings off the bat. £69 million has been spent. These are just our youth players coming in. Um, I can bring them back in from sort of June-ish. So we've got four good youngsters coming in, but they're way down the line. Zeno Debast is the first signing. A big one at that as well. A player that I always seem to sign on these rebuilds. He's fantastic, isn't he? 19 years old from Belgium, six foot three, worth 81 to 160 million. As soon as you sign him for a mere 23 million, he just looks brilliant. And he's just, he's a must buy. If you haven't brought him yet, just do yourself a job. Go and get him. He's fantastic. A slightly different sign in, a one that I think is going to do very well for us. Abel Ruiz, a man who to me was tipped for massive things when he was at Barcelona. I remember him very strongly in my mind. Um, obviously then going to Braga, 93 games, 19 goals for Braga. We're going to bring him to France and see if this guy can absolutely smash it. It was a bargain to be honest. It was nine and a half million pounds and he just looks really, really good. And I hope he's going to be good enough to replace the goals of Moussa Dembele as that advance forward. I think he can certainly do a job. And everyone's favourite right back. Every time I load up a stream, every time we do a rebuild, everyone wants Ivan Fresnader. So we have brought the people what they want. And Ivan Fresnader is in at Lyon. And he is going to do very well in this inverted wing back on support role. His stats are brilliant at it. And the kid is 18 years of age. We signed him for £38 million, which I believe is his release clause. His values are already up at £150 million. But we are not done quite yet. We've got four signings coming in as well on free contracts. Number one. Aaron, a left back to compete with Nico Tagliafico, just 26 years of age, another very good player. And again, this inverted wing back role seems to suit him very, very well. A value of 25 to 27 million. And like I say, it was a free contract. So a very good one at that. And Mari Forsen is the next man, a youngster from Manchester United, brought in on a free contract. Probably never going to see him. Inyaka Pena, a good backup goalkeeper for free from Barcelona. Um, 24 years of age, just to be fair, a decent backup. And a man... Who's got the best agent in the world? He's now joined the biggest club in France. He's been at PSG, I think. He's been at Bayern Munich. And it's time for him to come to Olympic Lyon. Eric Choupo moting is here for one year. And let's see if he can guide us to French glory. The team is looking like this then. We've got uh, Amine Sar, Lacazette and Ruiz as the front three. Awar on the left, Tolisso on the right, Kakare in the middle. Tagliafico, uh, Lukebia and Debast at the back with Fresneda, a right wing back uh, with Lopez in goal. Let's see if we can challenge. Challenging for the title, maybe a bit of a no-go. 20 points behind PSG. Second best team in France, however, that is what we are. 66 points, and we need to not let this place go unless it's to jump up a spot to overtake PSG. Abel Ruiz replacing them goals, Moussa Dembele being our top goal scorer in the league. Awar with 15 assists. The Champions League, I'll take it. Round of 16, Barcelona, a year or two down the line. Very good on FM. So we'll certainly take being run assisted by them. Uh, seven goals from Abel Ruiz and that. And Coupe de France, we managed to lose to Lille, which is a bit frustrating. We do want to win that at some point. Uh, how did everyone do goals-wise? Well, Abba, like I said, Abel Ruiz done very, very well. 37 goals, nine assists. And we've seen the emergence of Rayan Shirky. What a man. I don't know why I've got such a thing for this guy. I think it's because since he was 16, he was five-star, five-star on FIFA. And I signed him every career mode. And now, when it comes to FM, when I see he's a free agent for some reason, two years down the line, 
I side him every time. But this year, we're going to make him a Leon Prince. And he looks so good. 19 goals, 14 assists for us. Alex Lacassette, certainly on the end of his tether. 15 goals, 6 assists. Zeno de Bass from centre-back getting 11 goals as well. Brady Barcola off the bench getting 6 goals. Diamande at the back getting 5 goals. Uh, Roman Fev, uh, 4 goals, 10 assists. He's come back in from his loan spell. Uh, and Houston Mawa, 4 goals, 16 assists. So not a bad season. Not a great season. Eric Chupo Moting scoring one goal, but getting six assists and five of them being in the Champions League. He is now retiring, which is sad to see from Big Eric. We have got £43 million. Pounds. We've got £108,000 in terms of wage budget as well. We're scoring 2.38 goals per game, because he didn't just 1.21. Let's see if we can improve these stats even further. We've got the cash. Can we find the players? Well, yet again, we have made some top, top signings. Number one... Brighton's goalkeeper, Robert Sanchez, sitting over in Al Jazeera in the UAE. What are you doing over there, Robert? Come and play for Leon and be a dominant goalkeeper. The Spaniard looks fantastic. He's 26 years of age. Seven and a half million pounds. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I had to just sign him. So he is in. Uh, Eli Awahi has come in as a backup striker. The youngster from Montpellier uh, is hopefully going to get a few goals off the bench for us. He has been, I think he's the Lacazette replacement because Lacazette, uh, he retired. I believe this is a few days ago I recorded all of this. Uh, well, seemed it all. So I can't 100% remember, but I think that is the case. A player that I've never heard of today uh, before I was doing this. And now since then, making a few more videos I've seen this guy pop up absolutely everywhere. Flavius Diniluc. She sounds like he should be on Plebs, the program. Good old Flavius. Flavia, that's where that's coming from. Um, he looks fantastic. Six foot two, 23 years of age. Him and Zeno DeBast are going to be a centre-back partnership for years and years to come. And he looks fantastic. Make sure to go and get him on your saves. Uh, that is one of our youngs we picked up. And here's an, another guy you might have heard of. I don't think you would have, actually. Vitor... Roquay? Vitor Roque, the striker from Brazil. Pace, finishing, composure. The guy's got it all when he's 19 years of age. Signed for £16 million, worth £70 million already. Quite a good signing. In terms of sales, Aaron, the left back we signed, was very unhappy about his game time. £8.5 million from a year of just sitting on the bench. We'll take that as an upgrade. Uh, Tino Cadawere, uh, Toko Akembi, uh, Anthony Lopez have all left as well. Um, Anthony Lopez is the goalkeeper we had. So we need to go and replace him. How have we done that? Robert Sanchez. I forgot I was showing you guys that already. I was going to do some cringy little thing that we find our goalkeeper. We've done that already. A new right winger, however, to try and replace Corentin Tolisso. Yukinara Sugawara looked very, very good from AZ Alkmaar. £20 million. Very good player, but values of the same. He just looks great as a defensive winger. It was really difficult, I have to say, to try and find players that would do the defensive winger roles well. And it was nice because I'm signing players I've never seen before. And like the inverted wing backs, I don't normally go for Fresnader. I think he's a little bit too fragile. But why not when you're playing inverted wing backs? You're going to be fun and experimental anyway. You might as well sign wacky fun players. And Yukinara Sugawara is exactly one of them. Brian the Beatle. Shout out, Sam. Brian the Beatle is in as a left mid. Defensive winger on support. He's not fantastic at it. He can't do the defensive side of things. But as a player going forward, he can hopefully provide as good cover on the left. Good old Brian the Beatle and his mate Harry Winks as well. A free signing and one that I'm quite happy with, to be honest. He's going to compete with Maxon's Kakare in that CDM role. And he's quite good at it. And I would never have said that about Harry Winks, but he does look quite good. And another man who has come out of absolutely nowhere. Value of pretty much nothing. A free transfer from Manchester United. B-dub, Brandon Williams is coming in. A player that I like very well. And we know can certainly do the inverted wing-back role because the guy is even footed So, a good sign in there as well of Brandon Williams. A few other players leaving. Roman Fav has gone to SV Werder Bremen for 16.5 million. And Bradley Barcola, the youngster, has gone to Strasbourg. We need to see if we can compete in the Champions League and maybe get just 10 points behind Leo at PSG rather than 20. Let's have a little look. Close that gap. We did. Six points is the gap now to PSG. 77 points from us. 83 for PSG. And 74 for Marseille as well. So there's two of us in the hunt for PSG. And I tell you what, we had spells this year where we were top of the table. It looks like around sort of January time, we sort of fell off a little bit and just kept in that second spot. Like I said, we did not want to let go of second. 
So close, though. 14 points made up in one season. I'm very, very happy with. And Vitor Roque looks like he was the reason why. 25 goals in 33 games. Like I said, great finishing, pace, composure. He's worth a hell of a lot of money right now. Uh, round of 16 by Bayern Munich. What can you do? Bayern Munich and Barcelona in back-to-back -back years. 10 goals for Vitor Roque. Runners-up in the Trophy Champ. Quarterfinal of the Coupe de France as well. Rayan Shirky doing very well this season as well. Uh, 20 goals, 20 assists, 46 games. Impeccable. And he's playing up front as well. He's not even playing in his preferred role. Value outrageous. Let's have a look how everyone done. Vita Roque, 41 goals, 10 assists. Abba Ruiz, 24 goals, 19 assists. And Rayan Shirky, 20 goals, 20 assists. The front three dominating the stats here. Absolutely smashing it. All three of them, the top three performance as well. Zero the Bast are doing very well. 19 goals from centre-back. 7.11 on the average rate. And Lacazette is still here. I thought he had gone. It must be the end of this season. He goes... Just 12 games for him. Eight goals, 14. Uh, eight goals, four assists, sorry. Uh, Yukonara Sugawara does play, take that right wing role very well into his hands. Six goals, 14 assists, which is great to see. And he's developing rather nicely as well. Daniliuch looking brilliant as well. Value is not so high, but I think there's a release clause in there. He just looks brilliant and we love him. Husam Awar doing 22 assists from the left as well, doing bits. Uh, we've got £70 million. Six points is the gap. Season four. Can we do it? Let's see the signings we make to try and push us over the line. The soldiers have been recruited. We start off Joao Fonseca, a very good centre-back. 18 years of age in the year 2025. This guy is, I think, 15 in the Benfica Academy when you load up the game. He looks brilliant, doesn't he? He's 23 to 29 million pounds already. 18 years of age and the stats are fan. Fantastic. I think we're going to be loaning him out and bringing him back in in a year's time. Rooney Bargy comes in as well. £7 million. Pounds. If you don't know him, get to know him. He's 19 years of age. How we signed him for £7 million, pounds, I simply don't know. He was transferred because he wanted to leave. No one come in for him. His stats are outrageous. 16 determination, 16 technique, 16 agility, 16 natural finish, 16 first touch. And the guy's going to have to play up front as well. He can't play in his normal right wing role. So we'll see how he develops. But what a sign-in that is. Sofian Amrabat, a player who was fantastic in the World Cup, playing at Fiorentina. We signed him to try and improve that CDM role. He looks really, really good as that deep line playmaker on support. I think he can certainly do a job there. A value of 49 to 54 million pounds. Let's see what he can do. Costinha, just a backup right back. We signed for 1.1 million. Quinton Merlin, a player we're going to try and sign who's similar to Sukina, uh, sorry, um, Nagawara on the right wing. Um, see if he can do something on the left, a very similar sort of player. Can play all the way up the left, all the way up the right, can Nagawara. Hopefully this guy can as well as defensive winger on support. Looks very, very good. And the last one, Destiny Udoji, inverted wing back on support. Fantastic. This guy can absolutely smash it for us. The star ratings, ignore them. It's difficult to be good in this position. But when you look at the stats, he's going to be brilliant at it. Six foot two, 22 years of age, value of £70 million already brought in for a grand total of 30. I think that is it as well. There's no real massive sales, no signings. I'm still in June at this point. I think I pretty much just got all the business wrapped up nice and early. Um, these guys might have left. I will certainly update you on that. The team vote is looking really, really strong. Shirky, Roque and Ruiz as the front three. Sugawara on the right. Merlin on the left. Amrabat and DM. Adoji and Fresnader as the two wing backs. Uh, Daniliuch and Debas as the two centre backs with Sanchez in goal. I love that team. That is fantastic. I think if you played a little bit of a less wacky formation, you might do even better with it. So this tactic and the, the, the save file was going to be there to you for you to download at the end. It will be in the Discord below. So if you're watching from here and you want to give this a try, head down to the Discord and you can give this a play. We've got two seasons to go, though. Can we win the league in season number four? Six points was the difference last time. It's doubled to 13 points. We've not had quite a good of a year. And also PSG have only lost one game this season. Vitor Roque doing bits. We got knocked out sadly in the group stage. I think that means of the Champions League. Coupe de France runners up. Trophy champ runners up. Still no trophies. No titles. And I'm fuming. We had such a good start to the season. And again, January, it all fell apart. And we come second. Absolutely 
gutted with how this season has gone. The team itself has done absolute bits again. The front three is just smashing it. Vitor Roque, 47 goals, 11 assists. Abel Ruiz, the unsung hero, £9 million we paid for him. The geese is worth 70 now. It shows that what you can do with a player on FM. 27 goals, 20 assists. And Rayan Shirky, 16 goals, 15 assists. The guy is not even a striker. And he's absolutely smashing it. Rudy Bargi as well. Similar to Rayan Shirky. He's having to learn the striker role. 10 goals, 16 assists for him. Zido de Bast with 14 goals. Um, Quinton Merlin on that left side. Doing very well. 18 assists. Picking up the slack for Husum Awa. He has very much replaced him this year. Uh, in terms of uh, Sugawara as well, six assists for him, three goals. Not doing quite as well. Taliso, I think, playing some of the games there. I don't know who's playing that right mid spot, to be honest. If it's not them two, I couldn't tell you who it is. It might even be the Awa. No, I don't know. Rooney Bargi might be getting a few games there as well, to be honest. So it, it's all over the place. This is the team. It's mental. It's everywhere. <laughs> That is the end of Season 4, though. We've got 13 points to build up. We've got one year to do it. There's only one man that can save us from here. And that man is Brazilian wonder kid, Endrick. Yes. Why not sign Endrick when he's unhappy at Real Madrid? Just playing 14 games in the first team. One assist in two years. He's unhappy. Endrick, come to Leon, my dear friend. 19 years of age. Looks fantastic. We know the potential this kid has got. Can he do it up front with Shirky? Bargy, Endrick, what a front three that is. Unbelievable, £57 million we paid for him. But boy, does he look good. And hopefully he can give us that extra step to get to the top. Uh, no one else was signed there, I don't think. The other side we signed was Jair, who is a young Brazilian centre-back from Santos. Uh, good cover, good backup. Guillermo Rios was a striker I signed. Regen, he just looked fantastic. And again, I'm trying to build these now where you guys can pick them up at the season five mark. And it's going to be much better for you as well. There's actually some unbelievable players in this side. Brenner, another one. Goalkeeper, young, very good potential. 18 years of age. He has been signed. But the star man is Endrick. Is he enough to push us over the line? I think, looking at this squad, it's the absolute dream. Shirky, Roque, Endrick. Forget about Barge. He's on right mid. Amrabat and DM. Merlin at left mid. The back four is unchanged. No, it's not actually. Ja Fonseca from his loan has come in and taken that space from Dinaluch. So it's Edoji, Fonseca, Debast, Fresneda, Sanchez in goal. I just hope we're going to be able to get that little bit closer now. Can we win League 1 in the final season? Can Endrick push us there? I really, really hope so. Let's go forward. 12 months. Has the dream been completed? I am absolutely devastated. I saw how close the league was and I thought, you know what? It's come down to the last day of the season. Could we have won it on the last day? We drew 2 all to Troy. If we won that game, we'd have won the league on goal difference. Absolutely gutted. 68 goal difference, better than PSG's. We'd have been on 81 points and we'd have won the league and we'd have completed the challenge. But the team finishing, where did they finish in eighth? Have stopped us from winning the league. A season where we've been second for most of it. We go first on the last day. We bottled it. And oh, it's classic. It's absolutely classic. Did PSG smash on their last day of the season? They won 2-1 against Montpellier. The game was finished at the 12th minute by the looks of it, which is absolutely infuriating that we could have been the team to do it all and you know what's even more annoying Endrick didn't bloody play I simmed it the geezer didn't want him to play at all Shirky, Roque and Bargy was the front three we used Abel Ruiz got a lot more game time than Endrick did Endrick is just a mere young player at this point so when you come in you've got a wonder kid in your hands just use him Vitor Roque 25 goals 12 assists a slight fall off this season Abel Ruiz 23 goals 14 and 6 and I just have to say a massive massive legend a legend of the club, Abel Ruiz. Uh, Ryan Shirky, 23 goals, 11 assists. Again, I love this guy. Legend. Four and a half star now, £100 million. Pounds, just 23 years of age. You can absolutely dominate the world with this team. I couldn't quite get us over the line. I know you guys and your transfers can. Zinanda Bass doing very well with the goals. Rudy Bargi, 11 goals, 13 assists. Awa back at the left mid spot over Quinton Merlin, it seems. Certainly seems as well. 20 assists, 7 goals. Sugawara, 8 goals, 5 assists. The team, I, I absolutely love this team. I think it is absolutely stunning. There's wonder kids. There's strength in depth. There's wacky formations. Like I said, he changed the formation 
I mean, you could literally just pretty much do this and you could be on to an absolute winner straight away. <laughs> you could literally do something quite as simple as that and you can make this team unbelievable. Just have a play with it. Please come into the Discord and download this, this, this game file because it's great fun. And I think actually I'm going to have some fun with it myself off of camera because the team is just beautiful. I didn't even show you actually what money have you got to go overhead. You've got 25 million. That's a little bit disappointing, but you've got enough to make something work. Thank you guys for watching the video as always. I hope you really enjoyed this Leon rebuild. I love making the rebuilds and I hope it comes across that way as well. Have a good day. Have a great Sunday and I'll speak to you next time.